It's interesting the time frame that I approach this movie, given that I've said for many times, those of you who are not necessarily the most familiarized of my content offerings on this channel, that I've been in a catch-up phase for a long while, even with some older releases, and in terms of coverage. So last night, at the time you're seeing this, though, I'm debuting these videos on the same day. Last night I watched, all right, first covered dash cam, and I watched the movie. And I had, a, I had quite the experience, but one that was, on a craft perspective, very engaging, especially on a first introduction to Rob Savage. And I will say, having come off of that movie, and having considered the evolution from, because that was the latter release of what I'm thinking of in terms of an original horror debut, coming off of Host, I would say this guy is evolving in presence with the Boogeyman. And we'll talk about this still more in respect to a minute, but I'll, I'll just mention the points, at least in some of his earlier iterations. I have an interesting path, again, in considering this movie, because I, 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 I see an evolving vision of talent, and one that perhaps is fitting, given what I've seen evolve in his past works, again, in order of release date, Host and Dashcam. Now, while I will say up front, I'm not going to watch Host. Uh, I've said this you know, in the, time, in the past as well, when considering, er, considering coverage of horror movies. I'm much more a thriller guy. Horror films, while I love a scary atmosphere, I love, I'm a big jump scare junkie, I do, and of course I love a good story, I have considerations when approaching the genre. I'm not a big, you know, blood and gore torture porn type person, so that's not an attraction element for me, nor am I a big fan of a supernatural mainstay that's taken over, especially when it considers more dark supernatural entities. Coming off of, you know, being a Christian, that's a point of consideration I make pretty explicitly, and it, I just find it overly disturbing, you know, generally. Paranormal, I'm looser on, but like when you're talking about dark supernatural powers or something rooted, you know, in demonic entities or the occult, that's usually an out lying film for me that I won't necessarily partake in uh, entertainment of. So a film centered around a seance, I'm like, I don't find that that approachable. But on craft, not having watched the movie, I did get informed at least on the scope of it, and I did consult uh, both Foundflix video on the movie, the ending explained ones, I love his channel, as well as uh, the Kill Count video. I'm not only really familiar with the story generally, but I have a perspective at least on craft and presentation that I widely respect with this filmmaker in the creation of Host and how he manifested that film in an artistic vision within the horror scene. I was fascinated to get that backstory, so even if I'm divided on the movie, the effort that he put into that release was very interesting to learn. I enjoyed heeding that story and getting a good perspective that going into considering Dashcam and having watched it now, Again, I see an evolved vision, and I will definitely say that he's mastered the found footage line, whether it be, as I understand the terminology now, I believe it's a screen life movie, I think is what they call it, in terms of the Skype call type horror film that's been evolving for the last couple of years. We've seen presence of that as well in the horror market, or the thriller market too. And then doing something more along the lines of a found footage movie and what we're more familiarized with, with dash cam. Uh, I had a similar objection with that one in respect to my horror considerations, though I did make it through all the way. I did fast forward, though, admittedly, a couple minor times, and I did uh, look away several times. Again, like I said, I'm not a big blood and gore person. I know my threshold <laughs> quite well. Uh, not to derail on this point in terms of a tangent, but you, you know your threshold when you experience it, and I haven't covered the film yet. I will at some point, just to bring up this discussion, because I, I would love to memorialize my viewing experience for future endeavors. We're like, well, what is your limit? I tried consulting... Well... I haven't consulted the film even in just consideration of a trailer, but Hellraiser. I watched 1.5 of the initial features. I'm thinking the first movie and part of the second, and I will never watch again. I did try <laughs> to give you an informed take. Uh, the only thing that came off of that movie was I know where my threshold is, and it ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save the result of that movie for that conversation. It'll be a bit of a shock, but I think it'll demonstrate well I've got my limits. Dashcam, I had to look away several times. Again, like I said, it is a, um, a bloody mess of a movie in many ways, though well made on the found footage line, even though, again, I looked away many times, <laughs> admittedly. Like, I don't want to get too sick watching this, and I know from past exposure to other torture, uh, torturous experiences related to bloody violence, like, I know my limits, physically speaking. Anyway, my body can only take so much. <laughs> Anywho, I have a good perspective going in on the Boogeyman. I think he, uh, um, Rob Savage, is evolving his tenure quite a bit. 
And this seems to me to be more of a traditional horror film. And while Dash Cam was backed by Blumhouse, so there was some studio back in there, rather than, as I understand, Host had a much smaller vision and uh, a circumstantial debut. 20th Century Pictures is putting out The Boogeyman. This is also a Stephen King adaptation, and you know how much I love those. A lot of prestige. He's also got a pretty big casting uh, name attribution here with David Desmalchian, who I love watching. I'm very curious to engage with this release, but like I said, an evolving filmmaker in presence. I I'm really curious to see more. And while I will let you have a fresh perspective if you're somebody that's going into this completely uninformed, I did read the first perspective, or first paragraph of the story as presented on its Wikipedia uh, uh, bio. It's a short story, again, based on Stephen King's work. I think it issued in a magazine, but it's now available through the, uh, begins of, I think it's like Night Stories, I think it's the title of it. There's a collection of his short stories that's been published in a physical form, as I understand, and you can read the story if you want. I might, in fact. I've not read a Stephen King work before. I've seen many of the adaptations, and I love what his entertainment has offered. I'm very impressed with a lot of the works I've seen. Some, maybe not so much. I think of Firestarter lately. That was a bit of a clunker. But I've seen others where I'm like, that was a strong debut. Strong picture. Let's consult the Boogeyman and see how it is. But I'm very curious, again, on the Rob Savage credit and having gauged in information, more so, the host, or host, and then seeing it nearly in full, while considering times I looked away, <laughs> dash cam, I'm curious to see what is presented here, because he's a director. Let's get a good window for this, but I'm generally intrigued by what I've seen of his work. I'm curious to see him, again, like I said, mature into a grander space of both 20th Century Pictures, which admittedly, now that they're owned by Disney, is a much larger entity than Blumhouse, as much as I love them. Disney's a massive name, especially in the 20th Century Studios line. There's a lot of history there. And Stephen King, very well-known, astute horror writer. That's promise in itself. Let's see if Rob Savage can deliver. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm still going into this a bit fresh, too, on story, because I didn't read the entire thing. Sleep with all these lights. Just a bit. What are you scared of? The boogeyman. Isn't everybody? I don't see anything. Okay, monster check complete. Like many kids, she's got that night light she sleeps with. The giant one, too. Good rush scare. Not much time to process. Pretty immediate. <sighs> Unnerving. gonna pop out at any moment. <laughs> we all know how this works. <gasps> Good. Good stare. Forever. Worked quite well. Hidden. In the dark. It's like all those spooky monsters you think are hiding under your bed. Well, she's got reason to complain about one. <laughs> it's not real. What is this? It's the thing that comes for your kids when you're not paying attention. There's a lot of horror entities to do. You believe me? Don't you? This feels much more like a traditional horror release. It's not like uh, a found footage movie. And those, some might see as a bit more alternative in depiction. I mean, you know, a long while ago, this comes out on January 2nd. This comes across much more like a mainstream horror film to me. It's quite exquisite, though. I mean, I would say it delivers quite well in terms of a thrill. I think it's established, especially the speed of the scare with that door opening. It's pretty rapid. I like that it didn't necessarily take its time where it'd be like a slow creaking, what you might see in other... Uh, uh, story depictions. This one was like, from the get-go, you know, someone's popping out at you, and it just scurries right under the bed. It's fast, it's swift, not much time to process that, and you're constantly on your toes, like, okay, what's gonna happen now? And this young girl seems to be giving a pretty competent performance. That opening was incredibly strong. And though I didn't get necessarily the best look at the picture, or at the monster, because it was a bit rushed, admittedly. I'll get a better look on the editing. Oh, no, I saw it. I paused it at the right time. Yeah, that's quite creepy. 
good monster. And, you know, I will say in respect to both host and uh, dash cam. Pretty, well, you couldn't see dash cam as well, other than um, um, Angela. <laughs> that was her name, the entity. Uh, or at least I won't spoil that one too much. Just the character of focus was Angela. She herself was quite creepy. And I know an Angela, but it's much nicer. This Angela did not... <laughs> <laughs> display the nicest of sides we'll just put it that way <laughs> anywho like I said that was much I, I, I hope this is I, I, this is really PG-13 so I'm expecting it to not necessarily be like the gore fest that was um, dash cam this is much more probably along the thriller psychological lines I, I sense a bit of a psychological vibe at least in part but it looks good in terms of a performance. I'm very intrigued to watch it. I think it, the delivery is quite great. I like the atmosphere, even though, again, there may be a mainstream feel. And, you know, in terms of movies of monsters under the bed, I've seen some good ones. Come Play comes to mind. Great movie if you've never seen it. I think it's a Focus Features release, I remember right. Uh, smaller movie. Evolved from a... Like, this one evolved from a short story. That one is from a short movie. And that was exquisite. I love that viewing experience. I think you will, too, if you're a horror or thriller fan. And it's tame, too. I think it's rated PG-13. It's a great film. Good story, too. But the scares in that one, um, especially under the bed, fabulous. By the way, speaking of come play, I did notice, like, I can clearly tell that Rob Savage is a horror fan. Like, even as somebody, again, who did not watch Host, I did look at the trailer, and I did consult, again, some of those videos that I mentioned earlier. And that distinctive, I, I saw it, Maybe it's not, maybe there's another film he was referencing, but for me, I'm like, I see that come play reference with the filter in terms of like the social or the, or the, the Zoom call in that case. I forget what it was in, oh, it was, uh, it was an app and come play on technology. But I saw that scare before. I'm like, that was a good reference. I did. I'm like, I like that connection point. So somebody is very astute with his horror deliveries. Um, I like what I'm seeing here. This is much more like a mainstream type release. It's got the Stephen King attribution. Makes it infinitely, I think, more prolific than some of the past releases. But Rob Savage has offered a competence that I'm very interested in seeing evolve forward. With maybe a tamer picture where I don't necessarily have to look away because I'm grossed out. <laughs> or maybe I don't watch because I'm like, well, I don't necessarily, I'm not into seance movies. Let me know what your thoughts are down below on The Boogeyman. we got a while till it comes out, June 2nd. And if you still wish to disclose your respect, I'd love to hear it down below. I think probably many of you who are in the horror fan type landscape, I think you're going to like this. I'm I'm geared to watch it, although maybe some would say, well, you know, based on Firestarter, I don't have the most recent, you know, uh, uh, high claim of opinion. Although, didn't the Netflix release another picture based on his works, I think, recently with uh, Jacob uh, um, Martell, I think? I forget. Anyway, um, I might be wrong on that point. But Firestarter was the last one I watched, and yeah, that wasn't as good. But... This looks better. Even though I said this thing about Firestarter, but I, I I like what I'm seeing here. This looks good, at least for the time being. We'll see it evolve. We'll probably get another trailer at some point that'll better evolve the vision of the movie for what we can see now. But I like its first window. I'm generally curious. 